This is Two Minutes About Time with Luke Allen and Robert E. G. Black, the podcast that takes a look at the film About Time, two minutes at a time. I am Richard Curtis, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you don't, well, you can just travel back in time two minutes and listen to something else. I'm on your host, Luke Allen. I'm joined, as always, with my co-host, Robert E.G. Black. Hello, hello. And our special guest for this week, Johan. Hi, how's it going? So today we're looking at About Time Minutes 53 and 54, and this opens with the continuation of Mary describing how her parents are, where she says, oh yeah, and they're quite conservative, so maybe not those pants. Now, I have a question for Johan. Do you think it's because of her conservative parents that the decorations in her apartment are a chaos of a maddened mind, multiple Mm. patterns that don't go together, or is it just because she's crazy? (laughs) I... I... I honestly think this is more of her independence. Because ah, it gets worse in this minute. There's a red checkered pillow on that bed. That, like, no, stop with the patterns. Yeah, but that is very synonymous for a decorative pillow. That well, you for, a, on for one a... pillow, yes. But she has a quilt on the wall, a balance mm-hmm. over the window, the quilt on the bed, multiple pillows. The curtain to her room has four different patterns on it. I know, it's like, wonderful. It's, is, is it weird to say that they don't match so much that they work together? Yeah. Kinda. Like, it, it works as a style, it's fine. <laughs> At first it was so just bizarre, and now in the daylight it, it kinda works, yeah. I quite, I quite like it. I think yeah, it's, it's quite kind of like the, the bohemian look type thing, you know. Not a whole lot is going together, but it looks like you got a bunch of swatches from travelers going through your 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 town or something like this person at this offer this person at this offer yeah she finds a pillow but, she takes it home she gets what yeah. she gets and I, let's be honest I, she's she's a charity shopper <laughs> or, yeah. th- or thrift store is it for yeah. you <laughs> yes okay that makes more sense because i was like you bought it from people that like had to sell something but i'm assuming that this has to be her first place on her own completely yeah and no one decorated their first place great Ever. You got things that you liked when you saw it, and then you brought it back, and you threw it on top of a place that you knew it would go, and it doesn't match, but it's perfect. But she's living on her own, who she got to impress, until obviously exactly. Tim comes, but I have to Tim's say, not about to change mine it. matched, but there was a lot of stuff in it. Yeah. But I generally pick stuff that are all the same color, black and gray, and so it all went together. Yeah, so you we were walking into an Alfred Hitchcock scene. <laughs> well, and then Goodbye. bookshelves are multicolored because I just buy whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, that doesn't matter. Can you hold more books than you buy it? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That that, that reminds me. Well, I don't can't tell whether it's a weird or normal thing for a charity shop or thrift store. Uh, while I was volunteering, I'm just going to say charity shop. You know what I mean now. Mm-hmm. While I was volunteering yeah. in the charity shop for a while, we had just you know I don't know if it's a British term or this thing you have bric-a-brac. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. So we had all the bric-a-brac, and I don't know whether it's normal or not, but it wasn't organised by what it is. It was organised by colour. So ah. just all the different junk was just like, okay, here's the blue junk, here's the green junk. They do that in a section of the last bookstore in downtown LA. There's one part yeah. of the top floor that is just arranged by colour, which is really weird for books. Yeah, my little sister's yeah. got her bookshelves arranged by colour, because she says she knows what the books are. Yeah, if what you know books your are, books, so it can it's... be nice if you're buying something. Yeah, yeah like I mean, I, I I struggle enough with. I know I get why books are alphabetized by the author's surname, but there's some books I've been after, and it's like, do you know the author? It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it would be incredibly difficult to find anything by Terry Pratchett if it's just if it's organized by color. Yeah, like like Raising Steam and and Thud are already two different colors that aren't next to each other. Right. So. Yeah. I think the best um, way to organize your bookshelves is like Bill Nye in this film and have all the books facing the wrong direction. Yes, you can't even read the titles. <laughs> <laughs> I need a book. Yeah. Grab one. Doesn't matter. That is just... I I don't like it when when movies or anything does that. It just... I, I would rather have nothing on the spine than, you, than the idea of grabbing a book by its page. Well, I imagine that Instead these of stacks spine. of books facing the wrong direction were books he was done with. Yeah. And he just had tons of them he just hadn't gotten rid of. Them. Because I the ones on the probably, shelves you can see. Yeah, I think he probably reads books as many of us watch films in the sense of you finish with that one, you you know, you don't you you're too tired to put it back so you leave it on the side by the TV. Yeah. And next thing you know you've got a big stack he's of got them. stacks. Yeah. So cuz he's got 
you know, because it'd be hard to keep track of time when you're a time traveller. You know, it's just, he's reading and he just places it down and then eventually it's like, oh, I guess this is where the books are now. Well, to... And it's his room. He can do what he wants. Mm-hmm. I guess. I mean, when he found out that his dad could time travel and when when I noticed the book, it's all spines out. So, yeah. and he said that he read them all. So, yeah, I don't know. So she says, maybe not those pants. Tim says, <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, um, Probably could you just off. stall them? Stall them? And Mary just goes up to him and so, goes up to it and she says, come on up. <laughs> and so, so Tim's, the way that Tim says what at this moment, right? <laughs> yeah. It, Richard Curtis hated it. He said it was too aggressive. Oh, I love it. And then, and then Emma Freud defended it. Bill Nye jokingly on the commentary was like, oh, that's awful. It's so out of character. And he was just having a laugh with it. <laughs> I don't think anyone really minds, but that's just how Bill Nye is, really. And apparently while he was doing up his trousers, well, while she was doing up his trousers, in one of the uh, outtakes, she gets his boxers caught in the zip. <laughs> and so she ended up being like really, really careful for the rest of it. And I think that's all of my notes for this minute. Uh, there's there's a part in this scene or this minute that my girlfriend was like really biting her nails at because after the oral sex joke and the parents coming up, she is eye level to his crotch trying to fix yes. the trousers. Yes. And then we're, we're I thought they like, were going to oh, walk that in. Joke gonna be? Exactly. Yeah. Mm. And then I, she was just like, dare oh, I say, if it were an gonna... American film, <laughs> I feel like if this were yeah, an American they'd walk in. rom-com, yeah, they'd walk yeah. in at that point. Because it does, and yeah. Dad would have been I, n- I only noticed that this time because I'm. I mean, I I would say I'm naive most of the time. So so it was only watching the film this time. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> it was... Yeah, it's very. It's a very cliche joke, and this is where you introduce her dad being Eugene Levy. Like it, <laughs> it's played in a way. It's played out, but it's some. Depending on the actors, it can work. But the fact that they kind of teased that joke, and it's like, no, this isn't the movie with that joke. And everything was going so fast, like, is it this going to be when they walk in? This going to be walk in? Is this going to, like... No, they're going to have the better joke are of this conversation. conversation. Yeah. But there's parts where, like, are the parents going to walk in when they make... The, when they have another conversation about sex? Like, what not to say and all that. And then the culmination of the joke is, come on up. Yeah. Like, I think it sold it pretty well. Yeah, I think it, I think it worked. And I think it would have felt quite out of place had they gone with a sex gag like that. I think even even the mentions of oral sex and stuff is near enough the knuckle for this film. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And here are the how far you go on the rating of this podcast too in this minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I think I mean I think I'm going to I'm going to say the words <laughs> but I think I think the latin term I'm bleeping. <laughs> I think I haven't quite decided. <laughs> well I I I bleep I bleeped the word earlier on so i guess it's it's fair to bleep oh then you have to this time i can't yeah. this is a sentence i didn't think <laughs> a conversation I, i'd be having <laughs> there's your title yeah we'll bleep it but the title <laughs> so... will be we bleep <laughs> title's fine it's just spelled out and i i like the fact so i mean i'm gonna actually it's probably better that i read the lines before saying the line that i like and that probably makes more sense so come on up yeah. what i'm sorry they don't like waiting okay um do i live here Mary, uh, definitely not. Tim, are we having sex? Uh, yeah, but not oral. I wasn't going to mention oral. Okay, good. Don't. <laughs> How do you think that was going to come up? And then he, he says, yeah. could you help me with this, please? And she says, I don't know, but if it does, just deny it completely. And he says, who's going to bring it up? Your dad? <laughs> Tim? Had any this with my daughter recently? I mean, I, I, I think the fact that he said that they were conservative... And then him going to use the Latin word is quite a good... I don't know. I, I just... Yeah. I, I, I felt that that was... It, well, af- and after the previous conversation, it's interesting that he doesn't assume that's what she means yes. by oral. That's true. <laughs> there are ways we could look into this, but I'd rather not. In in his narration in the future, he's he's presenting himself as a, a giver. And Mary says, well, you never know. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, I mean, how would this... You'd hope it wouldn't come up. You'd assume that even the mention no. of where they were sleeping together wouldn't really come up. Not yeah, in the first conversation, no. Yeah, because with the the parents being so conservative, it becomes one of those, do you want to know the answer? Yeah. Because there's three different levels, or three different types of parents I can see this type of question being really weird. 
So there's this parents who are not going to bridge that question because they don't want to know the answer. That'd be my parents. Yeah. They then wouldn't ask the because they don't want you, they don't yeah. want to hear the answer. Yeah. Then there's the more freely me and my daughter have talked about sex where they ask and they just judge you based on what the answer is. Yeah. Because are you as open to what it is? Like, are you like my daughter? Are you completely different? Then you will have like the, the, the movie Meet the Fockers, basically like the sexual therapist mm -hmm. where it's like, so are you? And then they're going to derive like what they know about you based on your answer. Yeah. And it, it becomes that type of parent become it becomes a clearly educational type of question. I, I, I think as well, at least I'd imagine in this circumstance, I'm quite an anxious person. And in, if someone tells me, don't mention this, it's the only thing I want to talk about. <laughs> that's where yeah, well, yeah, that from. is what ends up that the, yeah. yeah, it's the only thing in his Which head. Is, right? I, I, I mean, that's that is so real. Like because there there've been times where I can't think of any specific examples, but it's like I mean nothing too bad. But it's been like my mum's been like, oh, you know, it's maybe not best to mention this to your grandparents, and it ends up being like one of the first things I say. <laughs> it's just like I've got to get this out of my system. <laughs> yeah, or just it just sits heavily on the front of your brain because you just remembered it in your short term memory. Yeah, that you're just like. Now we got now all these factoids are attaching yeah. to it, and you like don't want to forget. You, know, you don't want to forget like not oil to and water, and yeah. thus it's like I mean it's one thing yeah. which I think was a conversation I had with my mum at one point where I was like about how because I mentioned how I really really struggled with that she was like yeah if I say don't picture a blue elephant what are you going to picture once again I can't think of what <laughs> it is it might just be like if I mention like a film or whatever and you know it's got a different reputation from my grandparents' perspective to what it actually is or stuff like that really so Tim says. Okay, Mary says, okay. He says, yeah. She says, ready. Once again, this dialogue is obviously given a lot more, uh, <laughs> it's a lot faster, faster. It's a lot more realistic than me just going, okay, okay, yeah, ready. Tim says, yeah. Um, they're there, they're there. Mary says, oh, they are, yeah. Yes, they knocked. The yeah. Door. They buzz downstairs and then they come up, knock, and ring the doorbell. She was right. They don't like to wait. Yeah, right behind you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sorry, right, okay. And then Mary opens the door, and Dad, and the dad says, hello, sweetie, and that's what we get. I always forget her parents in this film. I feel like they're some of the more forgettable characters. Yeah, this this scene is just here for how it affects Tim in this moment. This and we get to see him be... very casually use time travel. Yeah, it's it's funny, but it could be cut yeah. so easily. I, I think these type of dialogue, well, jokes... Uh, they they quickly tease how yeah. things could go wrong, and when they slow it down, that's when the joke happens. Because it's kind of like you you kind of feel a lot of suspense, mm -hmm. but yeah. what's going down, and then when you're finally eased into a sense of comfort, then then that happens. And I'm pretty sure this happened to probably a good amount of the audience that watches it. That like in their head, they may be missing a lot of things that. Because they're thinking about, oh, this may have happened to me, or this is a similar situation, that you use these quick words because it's not a uh, heavy hand on what right. you have to remember. Because it's very repetitive. So it's like, okay, I got this, I got this. But in your head, you're thinking about that moment. But the moment that things start to slow down and you get to catch up with everything, that's when the payoff happens. And then the the good, like, lights out to it is where he's like, give me a moment. Yeah. And he walks off. So. so have we got much on visuals for this minute, Robert? Oh, no, we already talked about it with her helping him with the zipper. So I guess we can go straight yeah. into 54. I would much. note that his and his law books are on a shelf that's visible, so the parents might notice that. Yeah, but I also noticed that when they're sitting down to eat, he is better groomed. His shirt's done up all the way because of the obviously the conservative nature of the parents. His hair is done a little bit better because it seems like he's been prepping for the parents, of course, well, yeah, to that arrive this whole time. Come back in time to do it better. Yeah. Oh, I hit the mouse on my computer is just frozen. I've got the clip playing, but it's not letting me stop it, so I'll just wait for that to happen. <laughs> Hopefully I won't need that. You can't hear the slight audio of the clip, can you, coming through my headphones? No. Okay, that's good. No. So yeah, I mean, it, it, in these scenes especially, I think you commented on it before, earlier, Johan, like, Tim does seem really tall. <laughs> Like, I mean, yeah. he's, he's, yeah, six foot one, like, it's tall, but it's not as tall as he seems to come across. So, I mean, maybe he's just got very short family, but. 
how tall is because I'm, I'm pretty sure Rachel McAdams isn't that tall either. That's why it's kind of weird to have a. Yeah, she's quite other. short throughout the film, anyway. No, I won't. She's yeah. five four. Oh, by the way, just oh, I'm just trying to think because if I lose my internet later on and my mouse isn't able to move, I might have a problem because I won't be able to save my recording or anything. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I do here. Can can you all tab to the other screen? I'll have a check. I'll have a. Or uh, what are you recording on? You could like control S or something. I don't know. Whatever the save command. Yeah. I'm on. Um, I'm just using the Windows computer voice recorder. So, uh, goodness knows. That's why you be able, you may be able to alt tab at least and then switch over to the program in order to like it pause doesn't it and then seem save it. to be allowing that at the moment. Maybe it'll all come back. Who knows? Did, you, did your keyboard also shut? <laughs> no, because I... No, I've been he, having He already that... broke his keyboard. Yeah, I, I broke oh, my keyboard oh, that's the, right, other, yeah. the other week. I've, that's got a, right. I've got a USB one plugged in, but yeah, it's like... Oh, this is weird. Never known this. Um... <laughs> In case the listeners notice, as they probably will, that this conversation has suddenly changed and cut and things have messed around, my computer has hated me ever since I poured water over it a couple of days ago. So I think we're all back to normal here, but if not, then that's why. So could you explain what happens for the rest of that minute uh, while I load up? You got Well, you got to the end of 53. And uh, we, we, Dad we said, hello, sweetie, that. Mary kisses him, and then we're in minute 54. Yeah, they were about to sit down at uh, 54 for their yeah. uh, lunch. Oh, she says, Mom, Mom time. says, Hi, honey. Yeah, because my mouse froze when I loaded up, min- I loaded up minute, fo- minute 54, so that makes sense. That's a really good point for my computer to crash. Well done, computer, for saving it to that moment. And now we wait for Google Chrome to decide to open. I need to figure out how to stop Discord from opening on startup. You can disable it. Yeah, there should be a setting, easy setting for that. In for some reason, yeah, I, I'll have a fiddle with that. Microsoft Teams and Skype for Business also yeah. open up on Startup. I've never used Skype for Business at all. I think I click on it accidentally once, and then it it starts up doing it every time I log on now. So, yeah, so we meet the parents, which we did meet at the end of 53. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank goodness. My minute wasn't playing for a second, and it was like my mouse was working, but nothing else was. <laughs> this is anything could go wrong here. So she says, "Mum," and the mum says, "Hi, honey." So she says, "Oh, this is Tim." Tim says, "Hello, sir, mum." And mum says, "Hi." Dad, the dad says, "Well, should we uh, come back when you haven't got any company?" Or <laughs> that 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 line always confuses me. But I guess it's the conservative parent thing because they they don't they're not gonna leave and come back. They want Tim to leave, isn't it? That's what. Yes. That's what that line means. And they don't like, want to be the ones to send him off. Like, they think they they are being polite by not making him leave, but they want him to leave. Yeah, because they're hardly going to... I mean, you don't know how long they're, they're staying for, but they're hardly going to have traveled from America and be like, you know what, we've come to see you, but we'll leave for a bit. Like, you know, it's... So then Mary breaks all of her rules and says, oh, well... That would be uh, quite difficult because Tim actually uh, lives here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The mum says, really? With you? And Tim <laughs> says, yeah, but uh, no oral sex, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you're really bad at this. The blurred shot of like her smile disappearing as he says yes. that and, tur- and the turn. Yes. Of it is. Amazing. Oh, she already did bad enough, and he just made it so much worse. Yeah. yeah. And then it's, I beg your pardon? Excuse me. And then we just... I love the fact that we just need the noise now. And it's not even the whole noise. It, it barely no. comes in, and then... It comes and then in we, before he And then means. we skip... We don't even get the replacement version of time, either. We just jump ahead. Yeah. They, oh, guess what? He fixed it. I guess it went okay the second time. Yeah. He's starting to understand how to fix it now. Yeah. And we're understanding the mechanics of the film itself, too, so, you know... Sound came in? Okay, we're fine. Yeah. I quite like this exchange. So you've got the dad saying, 
So, uh, Tim, tell us where, you, where are you from? Which part of the country? And Mary says, he's from Cornwall. Yeah, it's really pretty. It's, um, that little bit right at the end. Sort of looks like a shoe. So how, so, has Mary been to Cornwall? No, but I'm thinking, no, that... she's just talking about a map. <laughs> yeah. Did she I, I, I just knows. mean, I just mean the fact when she said it's really pretty. Like, I guess she could have seen pictures and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's just seen pictures, heard from people. Yeah. She hasn't been to his house, or, so if she's been no. there, it's some other. And it'd be kind of weird, considering Tim's relationship with his parents, for them to go to Cornwall and not meet the parents. So we assume that they probably just haven't been to Cornwall. And yeah. my mum says, and you're a lawyer, is that right? Mary, yep, yep, that's right, and he never loses. <laughs> you don't think he's going to win, and then he just pulls something out of the bag, and what do you know, he wins again. Uh, what the mum says here, I have used this quote in conversation before. <laughs> since Since seeing this film, because I'm like, that's a funny line, I'm going to say it. And it works in conversation. It, 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 it was one of... I love how most of my funniest m- moments in conversation with people laugh are me quoting things from films that they haven't seen. I just that's steal humour. Yeah. So do you ever answer any of your own questions? <laughs> and then Tim says, I... And Mary says, yes, he does. Usually he does, but not... And that's where I'm in it ends. Yeah. yeah. How about this? Yeah. Her dad in particular... Is incredibly rude. <laughs> if it wasn't for the fact he's wearing a suit, he is the rudest person in the room. Do you notice that? I I didn't like him. <laughs> yeah, but it's because he's incredibly rude to Tim, and the way he eyes his daughter, it's like she he's just trying to see if she's lying to him. It's very, it it's it's a very American thing that power equals manners. I, I thought, are you, okay, maybe you are going to where I thought you were going to with the bread. Yes. Because well, the mom he, gives him the bread, he takes some, and just sets it back down. So the yes. mom has to pass it to Tim. Mm-hmm. Not only that, he also eats with his mouth open, etc. Uh-huh. He doesn't make eye contact with who he wants to know something from. He's waiting to see if his daughter's going to lie to him. Like, literally, if you take this guy out of a suit and just put him in a t-shirt, He's incredibly mm-hmm. rude. He's the same guy. Yeah, he yeah. makes it feel like they've come to visit him. Yes. <laughs> and actually, one thing I'm interested in is, obviously, you guys know this better with the American background. Mary's accent, does it? Is it from the same part of America as the parents? You see, yeah. here's, here's the thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be because it's part of the kid's upbringing. Because it's the same thing with... Yeah, because they could have grown but, up in a different place than she grew yeah, up. Yeah, of course, yeah. In. Yeah. It, it's like, I do not have the same accent around people that my grandmother does. It's just so much that your, your accent doesn't necessarily define where you come from in such a way when it comes to America, because everybody's got a different accent. Okay. Like slang that never existed in that area, but someone can bring it over, just it just goes through, like, nobody meshes to where they're from. It's more of, like, who they're more in contact with. So at this point, it seems like, I think, based on how things are, Mary's found a way to talk with her friends, not around her parents. But now she's no longer with her parents, that part of her mind doesn't click back to how she normally used to talk to them when she was living in the States. So it doesn't matter that she doesn't speak the same as them is now that she's no longer around them, she speaks the way she does when she's not around them. Like, she has the parent accent. Does that make sense, anyway? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's kind of what I mean about her accent. Like, it's just... I don't know. It, it doesn't have to match the parents. Because in the UK, you can have... A lot of times, they'll have very similar accents, and that's kind of how you know what city they're from. But... In the U.S., there isn't a whole lot of that unless it's you're in the South. Or or certain cities like Boston or oh, yeah. Chicago. Yeah, Boston. yeah, but then it's only centralized to that city in the most part, right. which, is, which here is weird. Hmm. I so. guess, yeah. I think there's I, I think there's a lot of people in England who kind of just stay where they're from for a lot of the time or don't travel mm-hmm. that far. Yeah, yeah. No. Like, I know a lot of people who kind of, their whole family's been here for a while. I mean, the house I'm living in at the moment was the post office that my great-grandparents worked at. Huh. So. That's kind of weird, but cool at the same time, because I... So, oh, sorry, carry on. Because things, 
once it's zoned in a certain way, you can't live there necessarily unless it's been a completely abandoned, like an old bank here. So it's kind of weird that you're able to live in a place that somebody, like, spent a good amount of their time, like, kind of providing for the family. Now you're able to kind of live in that. It It's kind I of think, a good thing that they're, I think they you're lived living in, in their, their moment. Yeah, I think they lived in there while they were working in the post office as well. Oh, okay. I think it was both. So yeah, what what other comments have we got on this minute? Um, I just wanted to bring up the fact that the mom is the one that's only talking for the dad. It's kind yeah. of weird that she throws that that side to Tim when the right. dad just, just, just like her. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of um, like that jab that it shouldn't exist because it's like you're doing the same exact thing. Yeah. Be- because I love to complain about Mary's apartment, that thing behind the father is really weird. I'm not even sure what it is. It's some sort of cabinet, but the door is lots of little rectangles of white and black overlapping. Could it be drawn on? Maybe. It At first it looked like it was a 3D thing, like it was lots of, it was something carved in layers, but it could be painted that way. I think it's, I think it's drawn on, yeah. But even then I'm like, that is, one more design to go with all of her weird stuff. <laughs> or it could be one of those cubby shells, you know, that you get that, that, like it's a open cube shelf and then you just get that cubby that goes in it so you can put stuff in it like clothes and yeah. so you can stack it up properly. Can and you that's tell just... what the photo is? Up on top of it? No. It's not very clear on that. But it definitely looks like somebody holding on to a girl or something like that. Yeah, I so think my... it seems like a baby. Someone holding a baby is how I'd seen it. Hmm. Quite a large baby, like not newborn, but like toddler level. No, uh, is it toddler level? I thought it was, could have been like her as a teenager type thing. I don't know. I don't see it like a super clear picture of it. Oh, hang on. Yeah, now I'm suddenly seeing it as a completely different image now you've said that. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like the shapes have just changed to just something completely. Who knows, really? Uh, Richard and Emma, if you've managed to get this far into the show, <laughs> tweet us. Tell us what it is. I mean, the question is, like, would they remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Because it could have just been something that the, uh, like, the set designer put in. Yeah, and possibly. it just wasn't them that needed to know what it was. So, yeah. If, if, any other comments on this minute? Or should we wrap up this Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, no, my other complaint's just weird. I have no idea where this table came from. Okay. <laughs> when she was cleaning up, there was not a tall table here, but whatever. Huh. Uh, she picked up stuff from a short table that was over in this spot. So, so I mean, she could have put the table out, or it could have been like a put-out sure. table. Yeah. They might even have a table that gets taller when you need it to. I don't know. They <laughs> stack his books underneath. <laughs> that's not weird at all. Because <laughs> that, that's the way to make a good impression. Yeah. yeah, it's why the camera's so shaky. It's balancing <laughs> on like a wonky leg. Yeah. <laughs> so, Johan, where can our listeners find you on social media? You guys can find me on ID for a minute. It's a minute by minute podcast of the Independence Day. I do that with two other hosts, Matthew and Alex. I also had a previous podcast called the Roughneck Minute. It was about Starship Troopers. So, theme of uh, aliens and guns and stuff like that. <laughs> and Robert, where can listeners find you? Uh, website lemmingdrops.com or social media Robert E.G. Black. The listeners can find me on Twitter at llama underscore bottle zero, Instagram at the ginger Luke, Facebook Luke Allen Film. All podcasts, radio appearances, short films are all available at lukeallen.co.uk. And this show is available on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Two Men's About Time. They can also join our Facebook group the cupboard to discuss all things about time this podcast and everything like that i'm just trying to see what else i had a really good interesting way to say goodbye saved on my phone and then i googled something else and i can't find it oh here we go smoke me a kipper i'll be back for breakfast (laughs) i don't know yeah i didn't get that one (laughs) no i I didn't either it just sounded very british one isn't it it has well what's a kipper Well, uh, because I remember there was an episode of, is that Faulty Towers, The Kipper and the Corpse? Might have been. It was Faulty Towers episode. And I thought it was a fish. It is a fish. Yeah. 
It was like, for some reason, I kept misplacing the smoked fish. And it didn't oh. The Two Minutes About Time theme is performed by Ethan O'Mahony and is a cover of the About Time theme originally composed by Nick Laird Close. Two Minutes About Time is a production of Lemming Drop Studios in association with Bottle O Productions. Mm-hmm.